me see if I, I am hearing the two of you correctly then. The, the trouble with the current drugs is that they're toxic, so you don't want to have to use them if you don't need to. So we're using this monitoring technique to intervene, not preemptively, but kind of preemptively, but really early. In fact, yes. actually, yes, yes. when yes. we intervene, it, there's it, a debate as to whether or not, you know, when should you intervene, yeah. what or, level should you so, intervene yes. at. So, yeah. so mm -hmm. you're intervening when you have some evidence that the disease is there. Yes. But if you, if you had available a drug that wasn't so toxic, it may be a, a real advantage to give a, a prophylactic, a truly prophylactic drug. Absolutely. Okay. So you want to prevent. You don't want to treat at the first sign of infection. I prefer to prevent the infection, you know, because we don't know first, you know, how much, uh, you know, you have to wait until their viral load goes up and you start. But I mean, prophylaxis yeah. is where we've gotten yeah. in this field yeah. all, thus for far. Everything we, for everything yes. else. Well, we just talked advanced. about for fungal yeah. infection. Yeah. So it makes sense. And as, as we come to uh, later on in this program, let's talk about that more. But in order to uh, flesh out a little bit of the discussion about this monitoring. Mm. Um, you know, when, when I ask my uh, house staff to order monitoring for CMV, they have a choice of all of these different tests, and usually you end up getting, you know, all of them. And <laughs> do you need all of them? What do they do? How yeah. do we monitor now? What are the various tests yeah. available? So it, it used, you know, in the, uh, for many years, we used to do the CMV antigen, you look at the antigen of CMV, PP65 in the blood. We know that it wasn't a really sensitive test. Especially Don't you need white cells? It's right, this is the yeah, thing. Right, it's so, in the white yeah. cells, so you <laughs> need <laughs> white cells, patients. and our patients yeah. often absolutely. don't. I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. didn't mean yeah. to cut you but, off. But, you know, absolutely, you're right. So, uh, so that's why it was insensitive test. So are we detecting antigenemia when it is almost too late or a patient already have a maybe end organ disease or something like that? So now with the era of PCR or viral load, it become it's very sensitive test. So probably we're catching pretty early reactivation and we're acting on it uh, in high risk patient, at least in court, any positive, which is sometimes we treat and uh, is this affecting outcome probably but we have to see the data uh, for say that we know that patients are dying from CMV anymore very rare so the rate of CMV and organ disease it went down from 20 percent down to probably three percent which is great but still CMV viremia is still occurring so what else can we do so what we did actually we were interested to see if someone is already have a uh, good immune system, good T cell, CMV specific T cell response, are they protected from CMV viremia? This can help us, and I will tell you where, because we conducted a study where we looked at all this very low level of reactivation. And are we over treating? Are this patient gonna progress or they're gonna have self resolution of this viremia? So we did a CMV specific T cell uh, early spot assay. And we found out that at certain level of response of interferon uh, release, uh, these patients are protected uh, from CMV progressing or from even CMV viremia. So this is not validated yet. It's a small study that we conducted, but in the future we have a, hopefully we see the data in multi-institutional study that we completed enrollment. And this may play a role in the future to help the transplant to determine does this patient at risk for progressing from CMV or does they need to be treated for low level or they need to be monitored actually if they have good CMV T cells. So that raises an interesting point because the, the PCR assay, first of all, you know, at what level can you, yeah. do you need to begin treating? But sometimes we actually have patients that have a negative PCR assay but yes. have in fact CMV esophagitis or yes. something like that. So do you okay. think this modality is gonna help? It, absolutely, so it, it may help us uh, to determine really if the patient protected or not. Yeah. Because this is what the data is showing that if you have a good uh, CMV T cell response, this patient, are, they may not need to be monitored also as frequently, uh -huh. but this needs to be validated and hopefully sure. we hear so more about it in the future. So, so I, I explain it a little bit more because I'm not, I'm not sure I'm quite getting it yeah. yet. So, so what is being actually tested? The T cells, and you're looking to see if they respond to CMV. Right. So in what you vitro. So you yeah, in vitro. So okay. you're taking the PBMCs, isolating the T cells, expose them to uh, CMV peptides, PP65 intermediate early antigen, and one, and then you see if they're interferon release. That meaning they, you know, they, this, you know, T cells are enough to protect uh, a certain level, a certain yeah. threshold against CMV. That's, that's, a, like that's the, an active this area kind of, of bone marrow transplant yeah. research. When yeah. do the T cells? Yeah that protect you from CMV. Yes. First of all, did you kill them with your preparative regimen? Yes. Or if you did, or lowered them, when do they come back? Right, so yeah. is, is that similar to a, like uh, the TB quantiferon test? Uh, kind of similar of the TB uh, T-spot, or the L-spot test. It's the same kind it's of, uh, but the T-spot TB test, it tells you a patient already been exposed to 
tuberculosis, then they will be at risk for infection. This one, the CMV T spot assay, it will tell you, or L spot assay will tell you a patient has enough CMV T cell, they are protected against reactivation. So what's the CMV quantiferon test? So the quantiferon is kind of ELISA test, different platform to test for uh, same kind of concept, looking at interferon release from this T cell, but a different platform, it's an ELISA test. Uh, I would say probably it's not as robust as the early spot testing that uh, you know is done for CMV. Okay, so so but right now are are those being used in clinical practice? Maybe I didn't not, even not get yet. that yet. Not I yet. would say not yet. So, but okay, so more to come. Okay, so yes. okay, so for our listeners, then yes. it's still the CMV viral load by PCR. Now, we've yes. made a lot of progress, Absolutely. but that's our current uh, state. Is and you trigger therapy at. What level? I know no one agrees, <laughs> yeah. but you guys are the experts. So it depends. I think, you know, it depends on the institution. <laughs> and I talk to many institutions here and in Europe also, different thresholds. Yes. This is the problem with the viral load. For us, probably, you know, for cord and haplo or high risk uh, patient, any positive at two time, you know, uh, two positive, it trigger treatment. Now for low risk, we wait until 1,000 copy, uh, not copy, IU per ml or international unit per ml. But other institutions, they go, maybe they have low threshold. We're still debating higher. with that issue, yeah, I think. I know. So, a, so again, it comes to, a ri I assume you get your whole team together, Mark, and it's a risk benefit, ideas in there, and they're saying, I think we should treat, and you're saying, wait a second, this patient has no counts, and I, I don't want to kill the graph. Well, no, we, at our institution, we try to set, our whole group gets together to, to set guidelines, guidelines, but each patient is individualized. Also, right, so, in different positions. Um, yes. yeah. Okay, so.